how to stay in a positive place when maybe things aren't going that well. You may not have someone that you can call or talk to. And at the end of the day, it always comes back to how we personally look at things and what we choose to focus on and who we choose to keep around us. So some of the things that I found helpful is making sure that I have things around my home that are a good visual cue and a reminder of when it's time to shift perspective and get back on track. So one of the things that I've done, and again, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know how important colors are to me. So I've made up, and I hope that those stand out, a bunch of flashcards that I have placed throughout my home. And they have reminders on them. Things like energy flows where attention goes. So consider where your thoughts are because that's where the energy is going and that's what you're going to end up seeing more of. The other thing that I try to remember each day because I do have my Reiki master training and it is a big part of my life are the five Reiki principles. In other words, just for today, don't get angry, don't worry, be grateful, work hard, and be kind to others. So focus on the here, the now, and just for today. Another thing that I remind myself about, if something's happening and it can be a bit frustrating or irritating, is as soon as I notice that's happening, I try to remind myself and say, thank you for the lesson, blessed be, and work on letting it go. Another thing, and this comes from Dan Millman and his four steps to inner peace. First, have the right attitude toward the problem. In other words, take a look at the situation make some decisions, look at your options, and move forward. Live in harmony with universal law. So if you've read about things like the law of attraction, or you consider the flow of energy, find your way back to that place of peace and harmony. And again, look at your options, take a breath, and move forward. Find your part in the overall scheme of things. In other words, there is a purpose to each of us and all the various situations that come up. And when something's happening, we need to take a look at what is our role? What were our actions? Maybe it had something to do with our words. Sometimes it isn't us, it is the other person. So take a look at the situation when you can at a distance. Again, looking at your options, looking at your choices, and moving forward with those decisions. And simplify. In other words, for myself personally, I find so much of the news is very negative and fear-mongering and it just, has very little positive to it. So I personally don't watch the news. You know, I try to focus on surrounding myself and connecting with positive people to not be judgmental and allow people their choices, their decisions, and focus on myself and what is of personal benefit to me. So when I'm having one of those days, it is helpful that when I'm going through the different rooms, I see the cards. That's one option to help get you through some difficult and challenging times. Other things that I do is I have a variety of different journals around because as much as I enjoy reading, I've also been a journaler since probably 10 years old. In other words, 
well over 40 years. And what I found helpful is getting journals that are both inspiring and getting things out of my head and on paper and then be done with it so I'm not whirling it around and around and around. So I always look for journals that have either beautiful pictures or inspiring words or I create some of my own. So the one that I'm holding up, when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars, right? It's, it's a great reminder. Because I am a very visual person, I also pick up journals that just have beautiful artwork on them. And again, I may use this journal for notes on different books. I may use it for doing my life is great list, which I'll be getting to that farther down in the pile. There's any number of things that you can do with the journal. And what I would recommend is don't stress about the spelling and the grammar or any of that kind of stuff. The whole point of journaling is to get those thoughts out of your head and somewhere else. So don't stress about is this the proper sentence format? Should I be starting a new paragraph? Just write and get it out of your head. Now, some people may do that using technology and dictate it, and that's fine too. Again, the main thing is find what works for you and what makes you comfortable. I personally am old school, so no, I'm not going to put that kind of stuff into a document that sits on my computer. I prefer old school paper pen or markers. And no, I don't have all my journals from years ago. Um, in fact, twice now I've done a major clearinghouse of them because it's also old stuff and old energy. So I've shredded them and boof, we're on to a new chapter. Another thing you can do instead of buying journals, although there's a lot of beautiful types, is I've picked up a plain sketchbook and I did this years ago. And you may have heard about creative visualization boards that people use and they're a great idea as well. I decided to put them in a book. So what I did is I got some celestial duct tape and I have some glow in the dark stickers because for those who know me, yes, along with color, I do love my glow in the dark. And I had a picture from an old calendar years ago. So all I did was select the picture that I wanted and because I love astronomy and have been watching the sky and the stars for a long time and so I found the picture that brings me inspiration and just gives me joy and pleasure to look at. I fancied it up with some glow-in-the-dark stickers, finished it off with some duct tape and so this is my creative visualization book. And what I'll do is go through and update as things come to fruition. Or if I've changed goals, then I add a new page. You can do it with words. You can do it with pictures. Again, the key is find what works for you the best. Another journal that I have, and it connects to my flashcards, is the energy flows where attention goes. So again, it's a good reminder and whether you have it sitting on a bookcase or it's something that you pull out when you just need to do some jot notes, again, it comes back to what's going to work best for you and get you back in that positive frame of mind. This one is an important one especially when things can become a bit challenging or the world and the events can seem overwhelming. A certain darkness is needed 
to see the brightest stars. In other words, as wonderful as it would be to have kindreds in the world and everyone moving in a place of light and joy and acceptance, the purpose that the haters and the trolls and the less than positive folks serve is a reminder to those who prefer to live in the light and move in the light that that's where you want to be. In other words, that darkness, that negativity is a good reminder of what you don't want to be. Again, visualization. And for me, feathers are important. So, you know, looking for different binders. This one's neat because it has the little tags to remember and deciding what you use it for. Because I do a, a bit of writing for myself, this is my one of my writing journals where I jot down ideas and do some work in the different workbooks that I have on creative and paranormal writing. Another good reminder, be true to who you are. In other words, don't let other people take you off track or turn you into something you don't want to be. At the end of the day, you're the one who matters and your viewpoint is the one that matters. So if you're finding that you're with people trying to sway you and it doesn't resonate within you personally, then take a good look at that and get back to being true to yourself. This one, and everyone has certainly over time heard this, no doubt, more than once. Life is better when you're laughing. So if you're in a difficult situation, maybe you're struggling a bit, then see if you can turn that around. Not just your perspective, but is it something that you can figure that over time you'll laugh about? Perfect example, no doubt in a year or so when I look back at some of the earlier videos, they'll be worth a good chuckle. But initially when I was putting them up, there was a lot of anxiety, there was a lot of stress because over the decades, I've preferred to be behind the camera taking picture of nature and so many other things and other people. And I really don't like being in front of the camera. But circumstances change, life changes. And I'm hoping that as people watch this, and if they watch till the end of the video, then maybe there's something here that has been of benefit or help to them or given them some ideas on how they can shift and turn things around. Another great journal that I enjoy, and again, this is just for jot notes as I'm reading, and I've labeled it Daily Principles, and it's kind of neat because not only is it a journal for writing notes, but for those of us who enjoy coloring and adding a bit of a flourish to our own pages, you can color in the borders and the feathers. So this one really serves a dual purpose of both notes and letting your fun creative side come out and play as well. The inner me is something I just picked up this year and I'm looking forward to working my way through it, which is why I've currently included it in this video because again, it's neat. It's a journal to connect with yourself, discover what brings you true happiness. And the pages, again, you've got options for some coloring. They have quotes at the bottom. Like there are two ways of there are two ways of spreading light to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it by Edith Wharton. Interesting concept. And then there are questions at the top. 
So how do you spread light to others? And when are you ordinary? And when are you spectacular? So this is a great place to do some jot notes. And then you could even use a different journal to maybe expand on that or remind yourself of how do you spread light to others and then review it down the road and see, are you sticking with that? There are some other great pages like how can you use past experience to avoid future trouble? In other words, everyone has a wealth of experience behind them different situations they face, challenges, good times when things ran smoothly. So make a note of what were you doing and how did you move past that situation in time? Was there maybe something with the words that you used or the emotions that you expressed? And is that something that you need to work on or have you made some great strides there? So the inner me is a wonderful way to make some discoveries about your own strengths and give yourself a huge pat on the back. Something else that I do, and I actually began when I had a back injury over 10 years ago, and it was definitely a very difficult time. And it was five months of maybe some of the darkest days that I've certainly had in my life and having to come to terms with, there were things that I could no longer do as much as I wanted to, but in order to get onto the road of recovery and to be able to keep my mobility, there were things that I had to shift and change. During that time, obviously, there was also depression and anxiety. So what I found helpful through reading different books like the Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and Steering by Starlight by Martha Beck, two works that I'll be talking about in a future video, I came up with the idea of writing a list and affirmations. And that also came up through reading works by Louis, sorry, Louise Hay and others. So when I started my Life is Great Because list, first of all, I named it that because I wanted to start in a place where things were great and things were going to be changing. And when I first started, for the first little while, that list included Life is Great Because I woke up, I got out of bed, I got dressed, the end. And it took a little while before I expanded on that list. And the important thing with affirmations is put them in the present tense as they have already happened. And, you know, it's fun to dream and put out there, I've won Lotto Max. There's no harm in doing that. Does it mean that I've won Lotto Max? No. But, you know, sometimes you just need to have that smile. And then you put the other things on there and whatever it is in your life that brings you joy. So in my case, my fur children are happy and safe and love. I have a strong marriage, which I'm very lucky to have after, you know, 35 years. And whatever it is for you, whether it's having food in the cupboard, a roof over your head, a social network of people that you can count on, take a good look at your life and what is going right. And consider where it is you'd like to be down the road and start writing about that. When I started this, I had a certain set of money that I said, I have X amount in my savings account. And to be quite honest, at the time, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, is that realistic, isn't it? And it took a few years, but yes, it was realistic. And I ended up with that amount plus. So again, think about your goals, put them in the present tense, and 
focus on them. Don't obsess about them, but put them down, consider them, and know that there's certainly that possibility if you keep moving forward. Hopefully, some of the things I've mentioned you can find helpful if you're dealing with a difficult situation or going through a difficult time or just looking at something to help you on a day-to-day -day basis. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you found any of the pointers that I've mentioned or suggestions helpful, please be sure to leave me a comment down below, as both of those help my channel move up the algorithm and allow other people who may be interested in this content to find me. If you're interested in more content like this, or you enjoy hearing about different books and different subjects, then please be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload new content. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time.